look at it right up there, you feel a sense of calm. It just emanates peace and tranquility. Now, these images you see here are all the 24 Tirthankaras that have been in the Jain religion. And this Suttalaya was built about 800 years ago by Gangaraja, who was also king from the Mysore rulers. And all these Tirthankaras, now you have various images of the same Tirthankara donated by different kings. Like this one here is the first ever Tirthankara, Sri Adinatha Tirthankara. After seeking the blessings of the Gomateshwara, it's time to move further down into the district to live the high life in Coorg. You hear so much about the coffee plantations and the famous Coog hospitality, and I'm just headed to get a taste of that. I've been invited by Mr. Appaya to join in in the festivities of Kailpod, and I'm telling you, I can already sense a great day ahead. After experiencing the wonderful festivities of Kailpod, it was time to get familiar with the terrain. It was time to get to know Coog for what it really is, the coffee plantations. Another absolute must-do is the Irpu Falls when you're in Coog. It's small, it's quaint and almost non-descriptive, but once you're there, you are completely taken in by it and I assure you, you will be completely soaked in too. I'm just outside Kushalnagar in Bailkupe and I'm at the Namdraling Monastery which was set up back in 1963 by His Holiness Penor Rinpoche after the unrest in Tibet when he came here. Once you enter this monastery, you will be transformed and transported to Tibet, literally. This beautiful monastery takes you back to a time of peace and kindness and that's what Bailkupe is about. It's not just a centre of religion, it's a centre of giving, of teaching and peace and that's what I'm here to explore. A visit to this prayer hall really can be such a strongly spiritual experience to be able to go in there and witness, you know, a sea of orange and red robes praying in unison. And when you're standing there in front of the three Buddhas, it truly is an indescribable feeling. It's an unexpected end to a visit to Coog, and a simple and beautiful one. And from here on, it's time to explore the jungles of Kabini. It's early in the 
morning and we're off on a safari. There's a bit of a chill in the air and everything smells fresh. And right now I'm with Prasanna. Hi, Prasanna. Hi, I'm Prasanna. I'm working here as a naturalist in Kabini River Lodge. Okay. Now we are going towards the southern part of Nagara Hall. Right. What an absolutely great start, Prasanna. I can't believe that yeah. just at the absolute beginning, we meet a mother and a calf. And she actually stopped and stared at us and called her son on. I think it's going to be the beginning of a great safari. So let's not yeah. waste any more time and head right off. Okay. The Nagarhole Forest Reserve is famous for its sightings. At almost any time of the year, you can be sure to spot a herd of elephants, wild cats like the tigers and the leopards, and even the great Indian goar. And of course, there's always an abundance of deer and peacocks. I must say, it's such a wonderful experience to be able to drive through this forest because it's green, it's absolutely beautiful, and of course, there's always the possibility of a wild encounter. Mysore is known as the battlefield of the gods, the abode of kings, the muse of poets and the playground of athletes. The Mysore Palace is the pride of the city, an eclectic synthesis of architectural styles. Once home to the famed Wadiyar Maharajas of Mysore, today it's a museum that houses global treasures reflecting Mysore's rich cultural heritage. The Chamaraja Circle can be found at the north gate of the Maharaja's palace with a beautiful marble statue of Chamaraj Wadiyar X. The Chamundeshwari Temple, located near the Chamundi Hills, houses the Shrine of Chamundeshwari, the tutelary deity of the Mysore Maharajas. A Nandi statue can be found on the 800th step of the hills. One can find several idols of Nandi nearby and there are many shrines dedicated to Shiva Mahabaleshwar and Lakshmi Narayana. Built by the Wadiyar Rajas of Mysore, St. Philomena's Church is one of the oldest churches in India, dating back to 200 years. The church is built in Gothic style and is one of the largest cathedrals in South Asia. Here, the Holy Mass is performed daily in Kannada, Tamil and English at the table in the Sanctum Sanctorum. 
Sri Rangapatnam was the original capital of the Mysore state under Tipu Sultan. The Darya Daulat Palace was built mainly of teakwood and was the summer palace of Tipu Sultan. The beautiful Darya Daulat Bagh gardens attract scores of tourists around the year. As one reaches Somnathpur, one feels an eternal stillness and freshness in the air. As here, amidst the lasting rural serenity, stands Somnathpur Temple, one of the grandest of the Hoysala monuments. Unique in design, perfect in proportion, and a striking masterpiece. I'm about 65 kilometers away from Mysore at the Shivana Samudra Falls. Now, Shivana Samudra consists of two falls, the Bara Chukki and this one here, the Gagan Chukki. This is where the Kaveri River comes crashing down these rocks to fall 75 meters down. This is a beautiful spot. You can see the wide expanse of the rocks, the water, the falls itself and the mist. And on a lovely day, it does look like a totally picturesque sight. the main attraction of the Shiva Samudra Falls, the Barachuki, and it's just so pretty. Incidentally, this is the site where back in 1902, MS Vishweshwaraya built the first hydroelectric plant in Asia. And what a pretty spot to pick, right? I mean, you see all these waterfalls, expansive, white and big, and it's all nestled in the forest. It makes it just so pretty to behold. short trek down from up there to this spot and once you get here it's not just absolutely beautiful visuals but also a short adventurous boat ride right to the waterfalls that's right Lingraj here tells me he's gonna take me right under the shower and I'm taking him up to the challenge but now I'm beginning to wonder if I have what it takes to actually go there well I guess the best thing to do is figure it out I must say this is already just so exciting Anna Bunny I'm that close to the waterfalls. It's a little scary, I must say. I can actually almost touch the rocks. It's an unbelievable feeling and it's all raining down on me right here at Barachuki. You should do this. As I wrap up my journey through Karnataka, there's an indescribable sense of calm and joy. It truly has been magical and everything that Karnataka promised has come true. It has been one state, many worlds.